Tennessee and NC State do battle in the Queen City in the Duke's Mayo Classic, a huge early season non-conference clash between the SEC and the ACC. I am Chris Phillips. He is Cole Thompson. We are previewing, predicting, breaking down everything you need to know for this weekend's matchup between the Volunteers and the Wolfpack. Guys, appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications. Check us out via podcast wherever you get those as well. You can also find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. We're brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Use promo code SECU to get $20 off your first purchase. Again, guys, that's our friends over at Game Time. Download the app. Use promo code SECU to get $20 off today. The Tennessee Volunteers and NC State do battle in Charlotte, North Carolina in the Dukes Mayo Classic, a huge early season clash. SEC, ACC, the hopes of 2024 on the line, a pair of college football playoff hopefuls looking to set the tone for their 2024 campaign, helping me break this thing down, preview it, predict it, everything in between. My good friend, Mr. Cole Thompson. Cole, what's going on, my man? Appreciate you taking the time. This is the Cole Thompson Bowl. This this is what we've been waiting for. This is what we're excited about. Everyone who knows me, everyone who has been following this channel, knows that the two states that I love near and dear to my heart, besides Texas, is North Carolina. And I'm a big, big internal fan of NC State. I love Raleigh, the people there, the hospitality, the ambiance of what you see at the field, what you see at Ryan Finley, plus the atmosphere on game day, second to none. Well, there's something about the Volunteer State. There's something about going to Knoxville. There's something about hearing Rocky Top be played. I love Tennessee. I love the Tennessee fan base. I love everything about the University of Tennessee, how they have established a culture and an identity. And I made this clear. Whoever wins this game, eventually, you win me. I will move to your state. You will have me in your general vicinity. I will become a part of your pack. I will become a part of your volunteer militia. I will be there for all of it. So the Cole Thompson Bowl, the game of the week that I am most excited for. And yes, overreactions are a big deal, which is why we got to make sure that we reel you all back in, Tennessee fans. It's also why we got to reel you back in, NC State fans. The cloud of the sky is not dark and gloomy just yet in Raleigh. The atmosphere of euphoric praise and the reincarnation of Peyton Manning 2.0 has not been established just yet. One game does not define your season, but this will be a tone center that we will be talking about, I think, going into early November. Cole, it's also the SEC Unfiltered game of the week, you could call it, because we will be there on hand. The SEC Unfiltered tour makes a stop in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yours truly will be in the Queen City. We'll be in the game, obviously, Saturday night at B of A. Cannot wait to hang out with a bunch of great volunteers and take it all in. And on a side note, Cole, a bit of a homecoming of sorts for yours truly. About around eight years ago this time, I started my entrepreneurial journey in Charlotte. Got things rolling on the content side of things, so it's going to be a lot of fun going back. Bit of a homecoming. A lot of folks I know up there, including some Tennessee fans, we are going to have a blast in the Queen City. Again, this game taking place Saturday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, ABC, Charlotte, North Carolina at Bank of America Stadium. Cole, Tennessee in this game, a seven and a half point favorite. The over-under set at 59 and a half, the all-time series. Tennessee leads it two to one. And the last meeting, 2012, Tennessee won 35 to 21 in that matchup. Cole, as we turn our attention to the NC State Wolfpack, maybe for Tennessee fans or SEC fans who are not familiar with NC State, a team that came into the season with a ton of hype. Mr. Cole Thompson was one of them that was pushing this hype. One of those teams in the ACC, a bit of a, a dark horse to get to that 9-10 win mark, maybe push to be in Charlotte in the ACC title, maybe make a 12-team college ball playoff. They struggled mightily in their season opener against Western Carolina. This was a game that was in a bit of doubt in the fourth quarter. Grayson McCall, the Coastal Carolina transfer, people really high on, struggled a bit. But again, NC State got it rolling. They had to end up winning this game. I believe the final score, Cole, 38-21 to in that game, if I recall correctly. Yep. Jordan Waters with 123 yards rushing. He had two touchdowns. Kevin Concepcion, is that how you say his last name? Yeah, Kevin Concepcion. Concepcion. He went off nine catches, 121 yards, three touchdowns in that ball game. He's a company of the outside by guys like Noah Rogers, Jordan Waters, Justin Jolly at the tight end spot. Uh, and then defensively, I, I think a big moment in that game, Cole, 
NC State lost Caden Fordham early to a targeting. He yep. is back for this game. He's one of the leaders of their defense. That that took a that took a bit of a toll in NC State early. I felt like uh, defensive end Davin Van is somebody Tennessee's got to account for. He was big in the opener. One and a half tackles for loss in that one. And then Aiden White, the lone returner in the secondary. So you could argue both secondaries with some questions coming into this game. Even after successful week ones, there are some questions. So, Cole, I I'm going to give you the floor. Yeah. NC State, the Wolfpack, give folks an idea. What do you like about this team? Why were you so high on them coming in? And what challenges do you look at they may, they may present for Tennessee in this one? Well, let's just go back and look at the fourth quarter. And that – remember the first 45 minutes of that game. You Let's know, the, overreact, Cole. Well, it's, overreact. It's, 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 you know what it is, Chris? It's just, <laughs> it's just a moment that was a blip on the radar that nobody pays attention to. It's game one. You're allowed to have your pre-game jitters. You know, you lose your best defensive player on the opening draft. It's not a great start for you, but you look at how you finish. It's not always about the first step. It's about the last step. And the last step going into that fourth quarter is what you can see from NC State on a regular basis when all things are clicking. Justin Jolie, not Jolly, I got that mixed up for a very long time. The UConn transfer, big bodied frame tight end, reminds me a lot of a Kirkland brand Kyle Pitts, can easily win across the middle of the field, good catch radius, solid hands, pretty fluid route runner. Noah Rogers was a name that a lot of people were kind of interested in because if he comes from Ohio State, and you got to realize sometimes there are just too many horses in the stable and one's got to be let off into the wild to find their next pathway. Jamison Williams was that way when he was at Ohio State. Goes on down to Alabama, becomes one of the top receivers in the SEC overnight, and is a big reason why the Crimson Tide were playing for a national title. So there is reason to believe that Noah Rogers, who had a very solid opener, you know, he finished with three catches, 43 yards, average about 14.2 yards per play, two catches for first down pickups. There's a lot to like in that. And then, of course, there's Grayson McCall. And McCall is one of those passers that probably will not wow you with the arm strength the way that Nico Iamaliava can. He's one of those passers that probably won't catch your attention when it comes to the acrobatic elusiveness behind the line of scrimmage. And also, I think just the pure pedigree of how you feel comfortable in the pocket. But he is one of the most accurate quarterbacks in college football. He is somebody that if you allow to get in the open space, can run for a first down gain, slide out, and make sure that he keeps momentum moving in the right direction. And he is somebody that comes with a better experience. You know, as much as we want to talk about the performance that Nico Iamaliava put on in Knoxville last week, that was his first real test, and it was against an FCS team. And again, it's the same thing here, but... You haven't seen him play in those high-profile stake moments. You have seen Grayson McCall against lesser-tier opponents because of, of course, Coastal Carolina and the Sun Belt isn't going up against quality SEC competition left and right, but you have seen him deliver in those prime-time events where you need that third-down conversion, where you need that stop, where you need to force to get this game into overtime, where you need to see a momentum shift back in your direction. And that's an area where I think Grayson McCall can really step up. The run game has always been potent. And the other thing that you got to realize, death, taxes, and of course you're going to have a solid defense underneath any Dave Duren-led roster. So, again, you look at that first half, erase it. What we're going to do is just going to take it out of our mind. Just, just, we're going to pull it out like in Harry Potter. You take away the memory. You throw it in the pond sieve, and it disappears for the rest of your life. You're not going to go look at it again. Because when you look at that fourth quarter, and the version of NC State that dismantled the Western Carolina Catamounts. That is what you're holding out hope for. And let's be real, Chris. The ACC is wide open right now. You have Miami, who's second best team. You get a win over the Volunteers. You are certainly putting yourself in the driver's seat for the silver medal. You know, you mentioned Cole Nico Iamaliava. That that that's where my attention goes in this one. As we dive into breaking down this game, you know. He had the big game against Iowa in the bowl game. Week one against Chattanooga, he was fantastic. It's Chattanooga, though. But he was fantastic, no question. I mean, 22 for 28, 314, three touchdowns. I mean, the entire offense was incredible. I'll tell you this, Cole. My big takeaway from Tennessee's offense in week one, Dante Thornton has come alive. Yeah. Three catches for 105 yards, two tutties. He has come alive, my friend. That that makes – they're already – loaded wide receiver room, that that's scary. That's scary for opponents. I mean, because you've already got McCoy, Brazel, Squirrel White. Now you throw Dante Thornton in the mix. And this dude is as physically imposing as anybody. 6'5", 214 is what he's listed on the roster. I mean, he, he's a stud, right? So 
but Nico Iamaliava on this big time stage, right? I'm 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 so fascinated to see, and I'm a believer in Nico. I really am. But under the lights in Charlotte, like you mentioned, against what should be a salty NC State defense, questions in the secondary. But take center stage, young man. I mean, this is your opportunity to, you know, I think people took notice in the Iowa game, no question. But you go out and ball against NC State and lead your team to victory, you're putting the SEC on higher alert. You're not just putting the SEC on higher alert. What you're really doing is you're setting a standard now in Knoxville. The thing about Tennessee is that this is a quarterback that was handpicked by Josh Heupel. This is somebody who immediately decided to catch fire, and when he decided to commit to this program, it it kind of felt like the turning of the tides. You're actually seeing the type of offense that you want led. And and that's kind of what you noticed in this game last week against Chattanooga, was there was so much more confidence, there was so much more consistency, there was so much more positivity surrounding Nico Iamaliava and the way that he carries his offense than last year with Joe Milton. Even at times with Hendon Hooker, you felt it. But this is a guy that you can build your entire persona around and what you expect moving forward from the quarterback position. Tennessee is one of those teams that is good for college football when they are good. With Miami, it's the same kind of pathway. You love to see what these big brands and what, more importantly, one of the most loyal fan bases and one of the more hard-driven fan bases gets to do when they celebrate a victory instead of just celebrating that it's college football Saturday. And that's a guy that does it. I love that you brought up Dante. Uh, I love that you brought up Dante Thornton. This is a guy that last year just never seemed to hit his stride. And who knows what it was. Maybe it was just learning the offense. Maybe it was and he was on the same page with uh, Joe Milton. Maybe it was he just didn't feel confident. But he feels confident after game one, and well, he should. And the crazy part is, Chris, is that Casey Campesion may be the best receiver on that field on Saturday. That does not mean for one second that you are left waiting in the winds about who is going to be really good if you're if you're Tennessee. Because you have guys that you haven't even seen really captivate themselves and separate themselves as leaders. Mike Matthews, for my money, was the most underappreciated wide receiver recruit in this past cycle. And I believe that in the next two years, you are going to see him and Nico Iamaliava speak such great languages that we're talking about Maxwell Awards. We're talking about A.V. O'Brien Awards. We're talking about Belitnikov Awards. We're talking about all ACC accolades, all American accolades, Heisman conversations. You can have that with the Mikey Matthews because if he still hasn't even found his rhythm, but the reason why he hasn't found his rhythm is because you have Dante Thornton, you have Chris Brazel. You have Holden Stays. You have Brew McCoy. You have Squirrel White. You have all these dudes ahead of him to where even if you don't have that elite, elite playmaker, and they might, they might. I'm, I'm Tennessee fans. Please know from the bottom of my heart, I'm not telling you that you may not have one of those elite playmakers. It just hasn't shown it yet. But what happens is in a game like this, this is the coming out party. Mm-hmm. So for so many different levels, there is so much on the line for both these teams. If you're Tennessee it really does feel like a new era of volunteer football. And it feels like that you have the quarterback that can actually bring you to the promised land, which by the way, Hendon Hooker, I think belongs in that same conversation with Peyton Manning after what he did in 2022. We have got to stop as a college football collective. And I'm saying to everyone, including Tennessee fans, stop undermining Hendon Hooker. Let's make sure that when we say the next Peyton Manning, we're also throwing the next Hendon Hooker in the conversation because of what he did that past in 2022 to finally win the third Saturday in October and truly set a tone to where he may have been a Heisman Trophy winner. But you do have that in Nico Iamaliava. And at the same time, your offense, if it's humming the way that it should, the way that we expect it to underneath Josh Heupel, that's a standard moving forward that every team is going to be paying attention to. Oklahoma's watching it. Alabama's watching it. Georgia's watching it. There are some minor mistakes that could happen in those games that could lead to monumental victories for a program like Tennessee. Yeah, Cole, you look again, it's Chattanooga, but Tennessee threw for 414. They also ran for 304 yards. And, and that's, that, that's the thing, I think, the misconception with Josh Heupel, Josh Heupel's offense. It starts with the running game. And, and Dylan Sampson, Cameron Seldon, those guys, it, it starts with them. Dylan Sampson, 12 for 124 in week one. Deshaun Bishop also went five for 60. Uh, he's a true freshman for them. Uh, Like I mentioned, Selden, 7 for 47. They were really good in the running game. I mean, again, 300 yards rushing. And, dude, that's without Nico really popping off in the run game. He had four carries for six yards. He didn't have to run the football. So I think that's another dynamic that maybe is not even on tape from the Chattanooga game that NC State's going to have to account for. I'm excited to get questions about the secondary. That's been the big talking point for Tennessee. 
the front seven, if I'm Tennessee, I'm sending heat. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting after Grayson McCall. Obviously, stopping the run is going to be the first and foremost. You want to take away that balance they're looking to achieve. But getting in Grayson McCall's grill, I'm not overreacting to week one, but from what I saw with him against Western Carolina, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just like I, I, I'm forcing the issue with him. And but the thing is, are you going to put your secondary out on an island against Concepcion and that rest of that wide receiver room? Because we saw what he can do, right, with the three touchdown catches. So I'm fascinated between this cat and mouse game, Tennessee defensively. That's the only thing I think that can undo them is if the back end of the defense, if that is still an eyesore, if that's a problem, NC State's able to hit some explosives down the field, all of a sudden you flip this game on its head and we, we might have a shootout on our hands. Listen, Tennessee's defensive front seven might be one of the best in college football. Their defensive line, Filthy. for my money, Filthy. is – it, it, their defensive line, for my money, is the best in the SEC. And I don't think anybody is going to argue that. I think their linebacking core, so many people said, oh, the linebacker, you lose Elijah Herring to Memphis. Just because it's unknown doesn't mean it's not great. Doesn't mean it's not potent. It just means that it's going to take some time. Kind of like the running back room. Nobody knew what you're going to get after losing Jabari Small and Jalen Wright. You knew Dylan Sampson could be good. But you watch that game, you feel really confident in the future of what Samson's going to be as your lead back. I feel confident in that linebacking room. The problem is, is that, again, we are overreacting to a performance against an FCS school on both sides, in both spectrums. For NC State, you had a sluggish beginning at home against a team that you feel really confident in, especially a roster that you feel like can win the ACC. And it took you... 45 minutes to really start carrying yourself forward. But at the same time, you look at a team like Chattanooga, you got five pressures, you got five tackles for losses, you got one sack, you got five pass breakups, couldn't go ahead and pull in the interception, zero turnovers in that game. So you can go ahead and say that there's a lot of positives and a lot of negatives where if you are NC State, you feel confident in potentially having a guy like Concepcion break free for a 25-yard game. And it may just be a heap of a pass downfield before James Pierce finds his way to eat up eat up Grayson McCall's grill. But that's a pass that is caught. And now you get to reset the sticks. And now you get to feel more confident. And this is maybe a game where Noah Rogers steps on up. This is a game where potentially Justin Jolie steps on up. This is a game where potentially you have one of the young receivers that's been waiting in the wings take that next step forward if you're NC State. So, yes, this is one of those games where going into it, there is going to be a lot of punchline culture surrounding what we've seen from NC State. And while there should, they did not live up to the standard of what we know about Wolfpack football and what we should expect against an FCS team. But there's also this thing called overconfidence with a young quarterback going into his first major test. You expect it to get a double-digit, if not a quadruple-digit victory <laughs> over a team like Chattanooga. Do you feel like that you're going to do that against a team like NC State? If so, I'm glad that you have that confidence, Tennessee fans. But just remember, an NC State defense is going to be completely different than what the mock spring on Saturdays. And even though the volunteers travel well, which is, again, one of the more beautiful atmospheres in college football, you, you appreciate that. And I think when you look at that LSU game a few nights ago and how packed it was in Las Vegas, you can expect the same thing out in Charlotte, North Carolina from those volunteer fans. They will travel in droves. They will be in the primetime spotlight. It still is a testament for Nico Iamaliava. It's his first major game where any major incident could lead to turning the tides in favor of NC State. First major test, Cole, and I think you could argue there's not a team in college football whose ceiling is more tied to the performance of their quarterback as Tennessee's is with Nico Iamaliava. I really, I, I mean, it, for this thing to click at the level that Tennessee fans want it to, expect it to, and I, again, I'm very high on Nico. I feel good about Nico, but, you know, th this is, we're going to start. That's what's fascinating. That's what's exciting, Cole, about this game is, you know, we have these FCS results to go off. And by the way, the old adage, you know, cliches are cliches for a reason. Teams have proved the most from week one to week two. I do expect NC State to make strides, and I think Tennessee will show up ready as well. But Nico in the spotlight, obviously there's high expectations on Grayson McCall as well, watching these two dudes work. And I'm excited to see Tennessee also at the point of attack. The offensive line, you know, we've seen them be really, really, really good at times, and I, I would expect that again, again, to get that run push. The front seven needs to go out, establish, dominate, if you will, um, but this is going to be a fun one, Cole. And there's, there's for, for either, either, or 
the season's not over if you lose this game, but this is a, again, huge tone setter for both sides. College football playoff hopes for both sides. High expectations of getting to 10-plus wins for both sides. And this is one that I think both fan bases, I know Tennessee fans, they had this one checked off, Cole, when they looked at the schedule. They had this one checked off. So, um, that being said, let's move to some predictions, Cole. I'll start. I'll start with this one. You know, I've seen a lot of Tennessee fans already on social media calling for the blowout. I mean, I've seen predictions like 42 to 14, 51 to 17. I don't see that. I, I'm not going to overreact to NC State, like you mentioned, having a sluggish start in week one. Listen, it, you'd find it hard to believe that you're not going to get up for your season opener. You're not going to be locked in and laser focused, but it is Western Carolina. I can tell you this. They're not going to have any problem in regards to Tennessee's got their retention. I, I promise you. And the best thing about a game like that, I will say from the NC State perspective, you had a sluggish start. You're literally tied at halftime. This is a game that was a game at the start of the fourth quarter. You pull away. You get somewhat of a comfortable win, but you put a lot of things on tape. You can learn from it. You can you can make strides, obviously, week one to week two. And again, th th there should be no excuse for a slow start in week two. Like, Tennessee's got your retention front and center. And I like NC State a lot. Like, I, I, I've been high on the Wolfpack as well. Uh, I think Concepcion can give Tennessee some problems at secondary. I just – I don't know what I'm getting from Tennessee secondary. If NC State can have some balance and give Grayson McCall time to work, they've got the weapons on the outside to hit, hit some big plays downfield. I'm a big believer in Nico Iamaliava. I'm a big belie believer in this Tennessee offense. I'm a big believer in the running game with Dylan Sampson. I think this is going to be a really fun back and forth ball game. I think Tennessee late in this one gets the stop they need. I'm going to go with the Tennessee Volunteers here. Give me Vols 31, NC State 24. So I think it is a closer game than maybe some folks out there are thinking. But I have never been on the side, Cole. Maybe I'm wrong. I very well may be. I've never been on the side of thinking this is a game Tennessee loses, and I'm not ready to change my position yet. So, again, lock me in with Tennessee 31, NC State 24. Well, I was one of those people that said at the very start of the offseason, do not sleep on this game. And I still will be one of those people that says do not sleep on this game. You had it circled on your calendars for months. Oh, chalk up win. Chalk up win. It's NC State. We got this one. No, 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 no. Your answer should be, it's NC State. It's NC State. Because here's the thing. In years past, even with Hypo, you feel like this is a game that you probably can win, probably should win. And it's a little too close for comfort. It's one that you just feel like, well, well we beat Alabama. We, we were able to go have Alabama march into our home turf, and we tore down the goalposts because we knew that we were the better team that day. But then – you underwhelm in another performance. And that's just the case. It happens from time to time. The, the South Carolina game, we can go back and turn to that in 2022. Yes, Hendon Hooker losing, leaving in that game with a torn ACL was a detrimental blow. But it wasn't like South Carolina established a dominance early on in that performance to where they pulled away when you had to turn to Joe Milton. And so let me just make it clear. Tennessee fans, you can feel confident in this game. You can look at Nico Iamaliava and say that, is a Heisman Trophy winner. I would agree with you. That is the best quarterback that's walked into this building from a talent perspective since the days of Peyton Manning. I would agree with you. We have the wide receiver core that is lethal. It is basically, we played the moccasins last week. The moccasins have one of the toughest bite forces in all of the snake culture. We have a tougher bite force in volunteer country. You feel that way with the wide receiver core. You feel that way. And unfortunately, I, Believe that you can do that. I also believe that NC State will find a way to pull away late. And NC State, with their defense, will find a way to deliver the clutching blow. Raleigh, North Carolina, I stand with you. Volunteer country, I love you. I'm taking Tennessee to actually win this 131-27. I'm pulling away. <laughs> I am. I can't. I can't do it. I, I, I As what? much as I want to believe in it, I can't do it. Tennessee wins this game 31-27 to in the final score. The I I am bamboozled right now. I, I, am, I, I, I am can't flustered. do it. I am I, flustered I, right now. I can't now. do it with that performance in the first half. If you are Tennessee, you do not feel comfortable in this game for one second. But at the end of the day, I think you pull away late. You're 2 and out. The only way I see NC State winning this game 
is to your point, Cole, we've seen Tennessee in big moments shoot themselves in the foot and stub their toe. I think that would hap- have to happen again. I-, I think Tennessee is a better roster. I, I like. I-, I think Grayson McCall is going to have nightmares of James Pierce. I, I yeah. really believe that after this ball game. Again, I don't think it's going to be the blowout. Some think it is. I think Tennessee State's a lot better than what they showed week one. But if Tennessee goes out and plays their A game, I don't think it matters what NC State does. And I'm nothing against NC State. But this Tennessee roster is better top to bottom than NC State. All facets of this football team are better than what NC State have. Very good football team, but that's how highly I feel on Tennessee. So to your point, I think they get the job done. It would take Tennessee sort of vomiting on their own shirt, and I don't think they will do that. I think they will come in laser-focused and dispose of the Wolfpack. You threw me off. I thought we were about to lose every Tennessee listener and fan we had, so good on you, Cole Tom. Here, here's all, here, here's I, I all would have respect. Said. Listen, I would have respected the pick if you went in C-State because th- this is, I will say, this is a game that has not gotten enough love in the preseason. In the it is not. It, it is not. This is going to be – there's a reason we're going – I think this is going to be a really, really fun game. Maybe the best game of week two. What well, what I will say is, is that at the end of the day, what this comes down to me, who is the better roster? I, 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 if you're looking at quarterback potential, it's a hundred percent Nico Iamaliava. If you're looking at quarterback pedigree right now and what you've seen, it's Grayson McCall. At the end of the day, it's who has the better roster. If you're in that fourth quarter, who do you expect to make a bigger stop? Mm-hmm. I think it's Tennessee, and ultimately that's that 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 is the decision for me. It's gonna be it's gonna be a game that we talk about. It's gonna be one that has massive playoff implications. I, I know that a lot of people right now are saying no, it doesn't. No, the ACC is guaranteed one team in. They could have two. This is a game where if you walk away with the win, you feel a lot more confident if Tennessee's on the outside looking in and there needs to be that 15 finding their way into the college football playoff. That is your caveat that you throw if you're an ACC team. So there's going to have a lot of playoff predictions, but I just feel like at the end of the day, the better roster wins. The better roster is Tennessee. Cole, you mentioned too in closing, huge game for the ACC. They have had quite a rough start of the season outside of what Miami did to Florida. Huge game for the perception of the game. They at least need a competitive ball game. I, I mean, you go out and get dragged, and the narrative will only continue. So, Tennessee NC State in Charlotte, the SEC unfiltered game of the week. We will be there in the Queen City watching the battle between the balls and the Wolfpack. Guys, how do you see it playing out? Do you agree with us? Do you disagree? What's your prediction for when Tennessee and NC State do battle? on Saturday night. Guys, it's going to do it for us. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications, check us out via podcast. Wherever you get those, you can find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. For Cole Thompson, I'm Chris Phillips. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in, and we'll catch you on the other side.